Yes, I watched last night's debate, and it is probably the only debate in history where the big story of the debate was not so much who won it, although the consensus was Kamala Harris did pretty easily, or about Mike Pence, Vice President Mike Pence, uh, constantly trying to interrupt, although he was a lot more low-key about interrupting um, Kamala Harris or the moderator Susan Page. No, the big story was this little thing right here. This little fly that about 10 minutes before the end of the debate flew on top of Mike Pence's hair and stayed there, I think the New York Times said, for two minutes and three seconds. They actually had a stopwatch or a timer figuring out how long this fly was going to hang around. So the fly was the, the story. The fly was the talk of Twitter. And it kind of just tells you, and you know the saying about flies being attracted to human waste, okay, or animal waste. Um... That's, that's exactly, the, he, that fly knew where the BS was coming from. And so that's where uh, the fly decided to make its opinion known. Anyway, so that debate, yeah, it, it could have been a whole lot worse. Uh, Kamala Harris is not the best debater. I've said in previous videos, she's really not. She's usually a nervous mess. And that's not a sexist thing to say because in contrast to Hillary Clinton, um, Hillary Clinton was extremely cool. I mean, she was calm, collected, and had a ton of confidence. I don't think Kamala Harris has quite the confidence that Hillary Clinton has. Or if she has it, it's not on display there. And some people are not real comfortable um, being debating in a public sphere. It's one thing in a courtroom where you kind of have a captive audience. It's another when you're on national television or international television and you're put on the spot. So she's not the greatest debater, but she handled herself real well with him. She made sure that he, uh, if he tried to interrupt her when she was speaking, she put him in his place. And that, that was good to see. But now what happens? Trump is now... He's way behind. I think, what was it that I saw um, in Florida? He was like, I want to say 16 points behind. I might be wrong on that. It might be 11 points behind in Florida. But nationally, he's um, something. I mean, he's just way out there. Let's see. Um, and yes, everybody thought that the, yeah. Biden is up 15%. That's probably a national poll. But, of course, it doesn't mean much on the, um, you know, statewide. But I think he's now way ahead in Florida. But, yeah, as I've said, Trump has been, ha has been done. He's been done since last, the spring of 2019, as soon as Biden announced. And the candidates, apart from Sanders, who ran against Biden... We're mostly running for the VP slot because it was never going to be any doubt it was going to be Biden. But I think, um, as I've said, in 2024, it's going to be a lot harder for the Democrats to retain the White House. I think it's going to, because if Biden runs again, it's his age. And if Harris runs, it's going to be the fact she's a woman. And we still have, there's a huge number of people in the population who still think women can't lead. They still think women can't lead. Even though they've been doing it for millennial, millennia. If you figure in monarchies and such, women have been doing it. All, you know, centuries and so forth. Um, but there's this, this idea that they, they can't lead, that's, it's about their hormones and all that. I mean, it's just stupid. You think about it, this stuff that we was actually seriously dis 
talked about in in the in the sixties and in the fifties and even in the seventies whether women could even lead, but also I don't think um, we should uh, denigrate what women do. Most women do either, and there was one person that. Oh, here, where is that? Now this I don't like. This thing I don't care for at all. And and he's probably this guy's probably going to lose anyway. But he said, "Key key takeaway from tonight's debate, women can reach the height of professional success in this country and still be subjected to this misogyny." And I wrote, "So any woman who is not in a male dominated field is a failure." You are just as bad as a misogynist you condemn. And it is a sexist remark. This guy doesn't even realize what he's saying is sexist. Because just because you're in a male-dominated field and you're in a high-profile field, that doesn't mean you're professionally successful by whose standards. And every, any other woman who doesn't partake in a male-dominated field, they're a failure. And this is one reason why many women will not vote for Kamala Harris or any other woman, at least a Democratic woman, for the presidency. It's because of this kind of attitude. They don't see it. They just don't see it. And meanwhile, getting to debates, Trump says he's not going to participate in any virtual style deba debate with Joe Biden, and he's so off his rocker crazy with the medication, and he, I mean, more off his rocker crazy, I should say, um, with the medication, that it's, it's kind of scary, because he was, he was all over the place about the stimulus thing, and then he, uh, was talking about how great he felt, and even though he looks like death warmed over, and then, um, he, yeah, he just talked, yeah, and now he's talking like he, he's going to campaign out in public, even though he's still contagious, rather than go up against Joe Biden again, because it's going to be virtual or it's not going to happen at all. And this is a town hall style debate. So, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of like throwing in the towel. That's what it is on Trump's part. And let's see, what did, yeah, let's. Yeah, he won't take part in a virtual debate. So he's lost it. And really, it's just as well. He's no great loss if he doesn't show up. Trump. Um, well, yeah, Donald Trump. COVID-19. The one that he said yesterday. Yeah, it was like a blessing from God. Here is this da thing, I, and I'm going to put this in here for the record. This is an atheist. Perhaps you recognize me. It's your favorite president. And I'm standing in front of the Oval Office at the White House, which is always an exciting place to be. I got back a day ago from Walter Reed Medical Center. I spent four days there. I think this was a blessing from God that I caught it. This was a blessing in disguise. I caught it. I heard about this drug. I said, let me take it. It was my suggestion. I said, let me take it. And it was incredible the way it worked. Incredible. And I think if I didn't catch it, we'd be looking at that like a number of other drugs. But it really did a fantastic job. I yeah, it sure did. It sure did. He, he's aged about 100 years in the last week. Now, I don't know if, if that's just the light hitting on his hair. Or if that's his, if actually he's really is white haired, that's probably the light hitting on his dye job because nobody has blonde hair at 74. So that, yeah, I mean, just look how bad he looks. Um, but yeah, this is a guy that's an atheist, probably the first openly atheist president we've ever had. I mean, he has contempt for for the religious right, except for those televangelists who know how to be hucksters. See, he's a huckster, so he admires televangelists who do the same thing. 
but he has nothing but contempt for the religious right or the so-called evangelicals, the charismatics, Pentecostals, who make up virtually all his base, along with the QAnon crack, QAnon crackpots, and um, white supremacists and, and all that, and maybe a handful of uh, mainstream Republicans anymore. I don't know if he's got very many of those, but that's. That's how bad he is. He feels great. He looks like he's going to die. He's having trouble breathing. And he wants to go out and give a, a rally. And who knows how many more people he's infected. And I saw some figure where as many, you know, that the super spreader event that they had with Amy Coney Barrett, that at least 20 people have been infected or quarantined with this coronavirus thing and who knows how many hundreds if not thousands of people have been exposed thanks to this stupidity so yeah he's done and you know it's now it's kind of a mopping up operation now the only way he would get in there is if Putin really wants him in there that badly um and others to um rig the tally, rig the voting, but I don't see how that's even going to happen. Biden is so far ahead now. But anyway, that's all I have to say about that. But the fly was the big story last night, and so that the fly probably would be more qualified to run on the Republican Party ticket than Donald Trump.